the RD-180 main engine, and four solid rocket boosters ignite to lift the Atlas V rocket away from the pad. Together, the main engine and SRBs generate a combined liftoff thrust of two and a quarter million pounds, or about 10 meganewtons. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. The Atlas V reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound at 35 seconds. One minute, 48 seconds into flight, the first two GEM-63 solid rocket boosters are jettisoned. The remaining two are jettisoned about three seconds later. Approaching payload fairing jettison, the Atlas V rocket is burning propellant at a rate of 1,700 pounds, or 790 kilograms per second, traveling more than 8,500 miles, or 13,700 kilometers per hour, and located 72 miles, or 117 kilometers in altitude, and 156 miles, or 252 kilometers downrange. During ascent, the spacecraft are protected inside a five-meter diameter payload fairing. This two-piece shell encapsulates both the Centaur upper stage and both spacecraft. At approximately 3 minutes 25 seconds, the rocket is climbed above the densest part of Earth's atmosphere and the payload fairing is jettisoned. 4 minutes 24 seconds into flight, propellant levels are depleted and the main engine shuts down. Six seconds later, the Atlas Centaur separation system activates to release the booster stage. The rocket now weighs a little more than 5% of what it did at liftoff. At 4 minutes 40 seconds, the first Centaur main engine burn begins. Following a 12 minute 15 second coast, the second Centaur main engine burn begins. Within this sequence, the second burn is used to raise the apogee to a near geosynchronous altitude. This mission is categorized as descending node geo due to the orbital location of the second Centaur main engine burn. Five hours, 43 minutes, 54 seconds after liftoff, the RL-10 engine ignites for a final burn. This burn enables Centaur to circularize its orbit and make a plane change towards its final separation orbit. Nearly two and a half minutes later, Centaur completes its final engine cutoff following a guidance-commanded shutdown, a capability which ensures precise orbit injection. The first of two spacecraft separations occurs at 5 hours, 49 minutes, 36 seconds, releasing wide field of view for the Space Force's Space Sensing Directorate. This satellite will test advanced designs to continuously monitor up to one-third of Earth's surface and explore future missile warning algorithms with data collected in space. At 5 hours, 59 minutes, 3 seconds, Centaur releases the booster adapter, which is used to isolate the two spacecraft during ascent. Prior to and after booster adapter separation, the Centaur performs an orbital maneuver to mitigate the risk for orbital debris generation. Six hours, five minutes, 21 seconds after liftoff, Centaur releases the USS F-12 Ring spacecraft for the Space Systems Command Innovation and Prototyping Directorate. 